Hi, testing. Daff it up. Daffs. This is our adoption story. What do you think? <laughs> Do I see a pretty girl in there? So evidently, November is Adoption Awareness Month. Pretty cool, huh? I didn't know that such a thing exists, but I thought with all the things we talk about on taking back the terms and women's health and stuff, we feel like adoption is a very big part of that. So I wanted to tell y'all our story. Told with the help of our adopted little girl, Isabella Noel. And yes, it is true. She does make her daddy's heart melt. Our adoption story begins two or three years ago. I never grew up around adoption. It wasn't something that we talked a lot about and I didn't really know anybody that was adopted. So it was just something that I never thought about. And I of course always just assumed, like I think a lot of us take for granted that we will just have kids when we want to. I know, I'm excited too. Um, so I just assumed that I would have kids and it was never, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit, it was just something I never thought about either way. And so I'm so glad that I had this experience to make me aware of the beauty of adoption. And so I want to share with you also a lot of things that I didn't expect to happen through adoption. It wasn't honestly until we, we started to have trouble getting pregnant that I started to realize that this might be something that God is calling us to. My husband, the beautiful man that he is, was always open to it. Like it was just always something that, that he wanted to do. So it was really me that had to come around and I have to give him props because, and I think it was the grace of God that allowed him to be exactly who I needed him to be in order to get me there at the time that I needed to get there. Cause he wasn't bugging me. He wasn't being like, you know, time's running out or, you know, anything like that. He wasn't pushy at all, which because of that ended up only being about a year, which sounds like a long time, but I think in the grand scheme of things, it was just the right time that I needed. To me, it meant accepting that I would never have children, which doesn't make any sense, but that's just what the roadblock was in my brain. So it really wasn't until I came to accept I know we have a screamer so we're in the age of screaming until I came to accept that that would be okay either way if I was able to have children or not and and really put my trust in God that I was able to move forward in my brain with this process and so I really haven't told many people this story but it was kind of cute you know, when you can't get pregnant or you, you kind of miss having those experiences where you get to announce to your family or friends that you're pregnant or, um, or even to your husband. Like if you find out that you're pregnant with a pregnancy test and you want to find out a cute way to tell him, uh, those things were important to me. So I found out a, a way to kind of get in on those experiences at the same time. So like I said, Chris was always open to adoption, but I wasn't. And when I came to the time when I, I decided that I was, then I decided to take my favorite movie, which was Runaway Bride. I don't know if y'all seen that, Julia Roberts. It's super awesome. You should totally see it if you haven't. But anyway, so she keeps not getting married because she's running away from it. And so at the end, when she decides she's found the right person and she's ready, she puts her tennis shoes in a shoebox and she gives it to this person, I forget his name, that she's going to marry. And that's when they finally go forward and it happens. So I said, okay, hey, so I'm finished running away from this. I know this is what God has called us to and this is the right time. So I put my tennis shoes in a shoebox and I actually wrapped it up and I gave it to Chris after we watched that movie. Because I told him, I, I planned a date night with him. I didn't tell him what it was about. I said, we're going to watch my favorite movie and then we'll go from there. So he actually stayed awake the whole movie which is if you know my husband is pretty unusual because he uh, falls asleep very easily he stayed awake through the whole movie and i gave him that gift of my tennis shoes and i said i'm ready to adopt a baby with you and it was really it was really a sweet moment uh one of the only moments i can ever remember besides the day we got married that he kind of got a little teary eyed we took some pictures with the movie on the on the screen anyway and um and 
From there on is history. We started the process and we found, uh, through the help of our friend's suggestion, uh, the Houston's, they helped us find a really awesome lawyer and social worker. It was actually through our social worker who found Bella's mother, her birth mother, and she approached me with it um, over a text message. Ironically, it was Mother's Day weekend a few years ago when that happened, which was really nice. We prayed about it and thought about it for a few days. It was a very pricey, very expensive decision. And that was one of the things that was difficult about it because Bella is 100% Guatemalan and her birth mother has two other children, two other small children at the time and she had to relocate. She was in the United States and she had to relocate. But we would be providing for her naturally and taking care of her, wanting her to get the best care possible up until she had the baby. So it was very expensive. Uh, but I really felt in my heart is that this baby, this little girl, she's ours no matter what the cost. Like if she's our baby, she's our baby, whether she's really expensive or not. I mean, that's just the reality with adoption, unfortunately, that it is just so expensive. And then that's something that we really have to work at as, as a country and as people to kind of realign our priorities and figure out how we can make that affordable for more people. But I'm so grateful that God has blessed us with the ability to be able to move forward with the expenses that we can, hold on, she's eating a leaf. All right, where were we? So this baby girl is ours, no matter what, no matter how difficult of a process it was, right? It was really that that I felt in my heart. We moved forward, we actually went to Disney World. We already had a trip to Disney World planned, which was really nice because it ended up being a baby moon. Like God is so awesome. He had this all planned out for us already. So we literally parked at our hotel parking lot in Orlando. And that's when we decided to call the lawyer or the social worker, I think it was the social worker, and tell her, okay, like, basically, all of a sudden wants to eat everything out here. Yes, give this birth mother our information, our storybook, rewind a little bit. So when we started the process, it's kind of cool because you make this beautiful picture storybook that really showcases your lives. And what I think was really cool and, and most important in the beginning is a little thank you note for the birth mother for, first of all, choosing life and choosing to go on this crazy ride with potentially us eating more things. No, thank you. Okay, sorry about that. Um, the beauties of parenting. It's a thank you note that is basically saying thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to let us in in our lives and giving us this huge blessing to make us parents, something that we have dreamed of and desired for so long. And we don't wanna forget that this is a huge sacrifice for you, like this is so difficult for you. We wanna acknowledge that and thank you for even giving us this opportunity. So that was in our book. I'll go grab it actually and show you a little bit of it because it's really cool. Okay, I got it. So this is it. It says, meet our family. That's our dog, Snickers. And I just, I would love this book. I'm like, this is such an amazing experience. So this is, this is a picture from our wedding and the note we wrote to potential birth parents. It says, dear birth parents, thank you so much for taking the time to peek through our lives and consider us as adoptive parents. We know this is a difficult decision for you and we commend you for choosing life and respect all that you have and will sacrifice. Please browse through our book and get to know us as the faithful, fun, and family-oriented people we are. May God continue to bless you with love, Chris and Mary. We really wanted her to feel like she's a part of our family, whoever this person is or would be, because she really is and is giving us that family. So here's some of the pictures that we put just to get to know us. We traveled a lot a couple years ago. My first time in Europe with Chris's job. Uh, here's our families nieces and nephews, when we got married, things that we like to do on our honeymoon, um, some friends, and just another little write-up saying, you know, we're so excited to hopefully become parents soon, and a little bit about how we expect children to be raised and just loved and showered with love, and that we believe in a strong family life, we have faith in God, and we definitely want to instill that in all of our children, and, um, be a part of the big of our big family. She, she has lots of nieces and nephews to play with. So, oh, and this is the back. I love this. And I found this quote, again, from our wedding. It says, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. 
and that was Corey Ten Boom. So I just thought that was a really appropriate quote for our future birth mother because there's so much about both sides that is so unknown. But we have a known God that we can trust with that and who knows us better than anybody. So who perfect to trust with that, trust with this task of a child, a child that is so important and beautiful. So when we got to the hotel, we called up our social worker and said, okay, give Bella's birth mother our book because this is another cool part. The birth mother, lots of times, I don't know how every situation is, but the birth mother chooses you. You know, like you think you're gonna go adopt a child and pick the child and maybe there's a little bit of that in there, but you really are leaving it all to God, leaving it all out there. You you figure out if, if our family is a good fit for the child you're bringing in this world and trusting to us. So we did that, that was on a Friday, I think. And so, like I said, we were at Disney World. It was three or four days later. Oh gosh, again. It was three or four days later, we're walking in Animal Kingdom. That's when we got the information. We got a text message, actually, which is a strange way. Yes, you're right. If you're thinking that's a strange way to communicate that information, and we thought so too, we got a text message saying that Isabella's birth mother chose us. Oh. She was more excited than that, I'm sure, at that time. We were walking in Animal Kingdom over a bridge. It was just kind of like, oh. Okay, I mean, it was a text message, but so it was like, this is a strange way to tell us, but we're gonna be parents. It's official. And it was a really exciting, awesome moment. And we just kind of took a moment and walked around kind of letting sick in. It was just probably one of the best trips that we've ever had for sure, because we're on cloud nine, so excited that God has finally chosen someone for us and picked us and we get to move forward with that. So to conclude from there, where was I? Okay, so moving forward, we got everything ready and prepared in our house, told our family and friends. It was really exciting. Actually, fun side note, I was talking about like making fun announcements, which is what I still wanted to do because I still wanted to get that experience. We went on Space Mountain. This was like, okay, if you've been to Disney World, right? Like you, this was the first time I've been since I was five. So anyway, we kind of just figured out and Chris hadn't been in a long time either. You know how you go like late at night when there's not a lot of people there and you can like ride all the rides with no lines or whatever. But we kind of found that out accidentally. So this was one of the nights that we were there when we went back to, I forget the name of the park. I'm not a Disney pro yet. But so we went late at night. It was actually raining. So there were fewer people there. We had a great time. It was the first time I had been on Space Mountain. So we went on Space Mountain a couple of times, got a little picture things. And we were like, this is how we should announce this to our families that this happened. So I ran to the bathroom and I got a towel. I had happened to have in my bag a marker. And in the wetness, I scribbled on the towel, baby in really big letters on one and Bella, cause we already had a name picked out on the other one. And Chris and I held that up for the picture in Space Mountain and we bought the picture and that's how we announced this to our families. So it was really cool and just a really exciting time. We thought we would be able to be there for the birth. She went into labor all day at home. What a strong woman and didn't tell anyone with her two children. So we, and we lived three hours away from where she had the baby. So we weren't able to get there for the actual birth, but we were there to meet Bella just hours after she was born. So that's a really big blessing. Her birth mother doesn't speak any English. She's in a new place. And this is, this is one of the biggest things that I learned from this experience that I wasn't expecting, is just the unsung heroes, hero-ness, whatever that word is, that birth mothers are to this world, to this planet. Meeting her birth mother how brave and how strong this woman is. And the, 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 just the beauty of it is that she had no idea. I think she was scared. She had been in the United States for only three years. She was only 21 years old. She had a one-year-old and a three-year-old at the time. Relocated from where her family was to come down to Louisiana. And for the last two months or so of her pregnancy, not speaking any English, not knowing anyone, not knowing having a job, um, but having to trust the, the agency and us around her, then give up her child to someone that she picked. But still, what a difficult, scary situation to do all by yourself. How brave, 
How brave of her. That's something I really grew to respect. I really just wanted her to feel love from us. We went and visited a few times. Before the baby was born, we wanted to get to know her and her two children, and we want her to get to know us. It was very important for me that she knew that that we loved and appreciated her no matter what. Whether she was giving us this baby or not, she was beautiful, daughter of God, she has dignity. She is just a great person no matter what, and I wanted her to know that she is valued. So I really hope we were able to communicate that with her. Again, I speak no Eng uh, I speak no English. I speak obviously English. I speak no Spanish and neither well very little like C si, como esta. Obviously, it's not great. So it's really hard to communicate this with her. So we got a translation app and a couple of friends of ours that that were very helpful in some text messages and, and stuff. But it was hard to communicate that with anything but action. Isn't that crazy? Like, now this is where actions really count. So we needed to step it up. I visited her once by myself, just so she would feel comfortable with like another woman, I felt like. And Chris also came. We, we played with the kids. We took them to the park. Uh, funny story, her favorite food is chicken wings. So we brought her some chicken wings. We took her to the grocery store um, and we just helped her with as much as we could. You know, I really wish we could have been there more, actually. But I think that was the most important thing, just for her to know that she's valued. And I don't feel like I could really communicate that with her until <sighs> after she gave us the baby. You know, I wanted her to know that, okay, we have the baby, but we're not done with you. You're very important. You're a very valuable person. So the day of the birth came. It wasn't this moment I dreamed of. It was kind of anticlimactic, to be honest with you. You know, you have these dreams of this perfect, beautiful moment where you're gonna meet your, your baby for the first time, you just became parents, and it really wasn't like that. But that's okay. I think that kind of shows the whole, you know, the reality of life. And the reality of that, although this is a beautiful, awesome journey and situation, it's also hard. It's really hard especially for the birth mother. So what happened was we got there and we had talked previously about what would happen in the birth room. And she said that I could be present. Obviously I couldn't because we didn't get it there in time, but I was very grateful for that. But she didn't know if she was going to hold the baby or not. The reason why this is important is because it's just a scary moment. It's a really scary moment for us too, because in Louisiana, the birth mother has to wait three days from the birth of the child to sign over her rights. So she has three days until after she has the baby to change her mind. So any amount that she holds the baby, if she breastfeeds the baby, it just really increases that bond and makes it more difficult for her to give the baby up. So we were aware of this, and although we wanted her to have everything that she needed, oh, I know, for that, that moment, I wanted her to have what she needed, you know, to get through that to be able to remember her baby girl, but it was also very scary. When we walked in the room, she was, she had had the baby about an hour and a half prior, and she was holding the baby. So we walked into the room. She didn't even look up at us. She was holding on to, to baby Bella so tight. I could just see the love that she has for this baby, and that's, that's the thing, and I'm so glad I get to tell baby Bella, and I think that's what's true about most, if not all, birth parents. You know, this is a difficult decision that they're making out of love, Mama. And she really did want Mama. Bella. She wanted to keep her, but she knew, and she had told us this in the little words that we communicated, she knew she couldn't take care of her the way she deserved. She wanted Bella to have a better life than she had. And that's one of the few things that she was able to communicate to us through a translator. She also said she thought about having uh, Bella aborted, but she knew that there were women that couldn't have children and she wanted to be able to help them. That's what she put in her paperwork. The agency asked them a lot of questions beforehand and then we get that information. That was one of the things that she said. She wanted her to have a better life than she had and that she knew there's women out there that couldn't have children and wanted to help them. And I'm so grateful that we were able to be that for her because I can't have children as far as I know right now. And so what a beautiful connection that we were able to make. So, uh, I was able to witness how much she loved Bella in that room and we walked in there. It took about 15 minutes. We literally just kind of sat there like, what do we do? Do we ask if we can hold her? Do we just wait? Of course you don't ask. <laughs> so we just waited and finally the nurse asked us, would you like to hold her? And I said, yes, please. 
And so she went to Isabella's birth mother and asked her, is it okay if I take her and give her to Hadem to hold? And she said yes. And with tears in her eyes, she handed Bella over to the nurse. And it was such a beautiful and just heart-wrenching moment all at the same time to witness this. And so that it was really hard to enjoy that moment because I was so concerned for the birth mother, for her heart in that moment. I would have a lifetime to hold Bella and this was her saying goodbye. So I took Bella from the nurse and I handed her right over to Chris, my husband, for her to meet her daddy and for them to have that special moment because I felt like I really needed to comfort my hero, my new hero, this birth mother. So I went over to her and I took her, her hand in my hand. I didn't know it was appropriate. I didn't want to make her feel uncomfortable, but she was crying. And again, here's my opportunity to show her, like, you are valued, you are loved. So I put her hand in my hand and I wish I had figured out the words in Spanish beforehand, but all I could say is, you are a gift. And I hope she understood what that meant. And if she didn't understand the words, I hope she understood it through my gestures. But I think that that was so important. You are a gift. And I just sat, I held her hand and I rubbed her arm for a few minutes. I don't know how long until I think by the grace of God, she fell asleep. And that was a gift from God to her that she could rest after being in labor and having to do this very difficult, but extremely loving and sacrificial act. She was able to rest. And so then after a while, I was able to hold Isabella for the first time. And Chris and I really cherished those moments. Again, not like we, we pictured, but that's okay. That's the reality of this. And it was a hard three days waiting, but I, I thank God that she was able to make the right decision for her and for Bella and finally signed over her rights. We continue to pray for her. And I just hope, I hope through this and here in this experience that we can all just remember birth mothers and think about birth mothers a little bit more and pray for them and acknowledge that strength and the gift that birth mothers are to this world, choosing life and, and giving children like the lives that they deserve and making our dreams come true, really. So that's our story. I hope that it gives you a little peek into uh, the adoption world. We're a very small part of that. Lots of different things happen and can happen through the whole process. But I'm so grateful for this process that we've had and obviously for the gift that we've been given in Bella and encourage you if adoption is on your heart or your mind there's a reason for that and so i encourage you to open that door and push it like you're never going to regret adopting a child <laughs> you know what i mean so it's very scary yes we were very scared yes there's a lot that goes into it but there are so much that you get back from it it is such a re rewarding experience we will do it again we will absolutely do it again at this point i can say i'm grateful for being infertile. Even though it's been challenging, it's brought us where we were meant to be. <laughs> and it has brought us this beautiful gift through adoption. And I can't, I can't speak enough about it. So, you know, follow our page. We talk a lot about women's health. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And uh, we like to bring hope in all forms, whether it's through adoption or women's health that you can get to get pregnant on your own or just be supported and get the help that you need through fertility awareness-based methods like Creighton and Napper technology. I love y'all so much. Thanks for hanging out and listening to our story. Talk to you soon. Bella, come say bye-bye. Kissy, can you blow a kiss? Yeah. Can you blow a kiss? Ah, oh, so sweet. So sweet. Yeah. Daff it up.